Hey everybody, it's Kelly, and I'm here to talk to you guys today about some of the training from the Art of Recruiting group um, for week three. And again, that group, for those of you who have forgotten or didn't ever knew, is a, a four-week group that um, some of us have paid for um, from a guy named Josh Coates, and he is a, uh, does his own leadership uh, company now, and he is a mem member of the John Maxwell team for um, leadership. Okay. So, um, and the, of course, the group is The Art of Recruiting, which is this four-week group, so it's really great. So this week's um, theme or focus is being coming intentional about your brand, becoming intentional about your brand. Now, before some of your, your eyes roll back in the, you know, the back of your head, or you start to see dollar signs ticking up because you're thinking about all these branding things that you need to do, like media things and websites and I don't know, logos and stuff like that, which, which can be done, frankly, like down the road. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're not going to be complicated about this. We're going to be, we're, it's sort of like branding um, 99 <laughs> for you with your Beachbody business, okay? So we're going to step back and we're going to talk about um, becoming intentional about your brand. Okay, so to preface all of this, uh, before we start talking about what is that, mindset about brand, all that kind of stuff, um, Josh want to make it clear to everybody who's, who's been doing the steps, what are the steps? Four posts a day on social media, Instagram and Facebook and maybe other places, Snapchat or whatever, okay? Four posts a day, one being something about your health and wellness, the other stuff just about your life, okay? So if you look, if you go over to my Instagram account right now, you will see posts about, I'll do it right now. You're gonna see posts about Henry, right? You guys know who Henry is because you guys know me. Henry, of course, is my puggle. Um, you're going to see posts about like my health and wellness, you know, sitting there with my coffee, taking a break. Um, sometimes I'll post, I really don't do a lot of memes and quotes because I don't really see the purpose of that. To be honest, if you do that, it's totally cool. But um, I don't because I just want it to be all about me, <laughs> which is kind of crazy, but you know, it is my channel, right? Okay. So I have pictures of me working out, pictures of me with our workout products, pictures of me getting up early, doing, you know, working from my laptop, whatever, okay? So um, I'm going to scroll through really quickly to show you guys what those pictures are, if I can. What am I doing here? Um, yeah, so I've got, like, my pictures here. I've got uh, my new shoes that I just bought for, um, for Summit. Okay, I've got a picture of Henry as I'm working, of course, doing my business right here at my, on my desk. Henry's under the table, under the desk, um, by my feet. Got a picture of my coffee this morning. Um, and so I've only done three posts so far today. So I might do something else. Okay. Um, and what is the content? How do I find that? Like, you guys might not even really exactly know yet. Like, yeah. Some of you guys are really fantastic at this. And you've already sort of figured out, like, you know, like, I'm Lois is a healthy mom of five. Um, Becky has got great content with um, her life and she doesn't always talk about her four kids but she works and she's super mom and she's super I call you know our, our Carrie Bradshaw like stylish and she goes out with her friends and um, she just does her stuff and she's like works out like um, like awesome you know because she, so she has pictures about that sometimes she has pictures or like quotes or memes about her faith too which is really fantastic okay so um, I also have pictures of food because I'm sort of the travel and fit foodie, which again, you don't have to have a brand name like that. Okay, so don't freak out about that. But like that's kind of my thing, like the travel, food, pictures of Shakeology. I have been having a really fantastic time just as an aside. I'm going to do another training about this with Pick Stitch. And some of you have probably had like knew about this forever ago. But you'll never do another normal blah photo again with Pick Stitch. And trust me, it's really easy. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Like you go look right now on my Facebook wall or my Instagram like even my picture of shoe my shoes looks cool because of dick stitch okay um, and then just kind of getting a sense of like how things are high contrast and like focus and stuff like that okay so that is all to say that um, we're talking about basic stuff for branding let's step back though philosophically um, the big picture here um, Josh would like you to know and I would like you to know too that you need to believe this you have what it takes to fulfill your dreams. You have what it takes to be the top coach that you want to be. You have your, you have what it takes to do what you want to do with this business. Okay. Inside of you right now that you do. Okay. Now it might need some coming out with personal development. You might need to like quell the fears or the other, you know, the devils or the demons or whatever you want to call it. Right. Things, the lies that you believe. Um, you might have some issues that you need to work through. 
But, um, but inside of you as a person, especially because you have the desire to do this, you have what it takes, okay? Um, here's a metaphor that I want to give you. And this is like, I, you know, when you hear like Carl talk about stuff, Carl Deichler, our CEO, he always talks about like the difference between the head and the heart and how um, as people, our heart is always saying yes. Our heart is always saying to move forward to good things. Our heart is always saying, um, go for it, you know, take a chance. And I mean, whether that's on love, on a business, on some, you know, something you've always wanted to do to just try stuff. Our head, on the other hand, is thinking about hmm, 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 all the things that could go wrong, uh, maybe saying, like, be safe, and, and maybe the scripts that we've played in the past for our lives, okay? And some of us don't have those as, as much because we've had maybe more positive influence with parents and people in our lives. Um, and some of us, frankly, have more of an optimistic brain mindset, like we're just born that way. But nonetheless, all of us have, like, you know, the sort of head-heart split, sort of. Um, there's another book um, that's called Switch kind of going on memory here. I'll make sure that that's right. It's called Switch. Um, and it's like the byline, it's like, why is change so, change so hard? Um, they use the example of the elephant and the rider. Um, the elephant being the one, the, the passionate one, <laughs> either has desires of yes or no, and you have like, you know, um, and the, the rider is thinking about all the different things that can go wrong. Like the rider of the elephant is like trying to like, you know, and here's the thing about that. We need both, so the elephant of the heart, I hope I'm quoting this right, but I think it'll work. So the elephant is that the more, you know, given to the passions, like wanting to do stuff, just as the heart is in the metaphor that Carl uses, the writer is the head. But here's the cool thing about this group, and I'm trying to wrap this all up. The neat thing about this, we don't just have passions without brains here. We don't have just an elephant without a writer with like no willy-nilly direction. The writer, if you will, or the head in the metaphor needs steps, has ideas about like what the problems can be in the pitfalls. The awesome thing about this group, you guys, we have given you steps before posts, like I mentioned before on social media, going out and using the ADOS method to go find people on Instagram um, who have likes. I've been like actually having a fantastic time finding people. This is going to sound crazy because it's like, I never thought of it as part of my brand before, really. But Henry, who's my puggle, and you know, apparently puggles are quite popular, even though most of you have never heard of them. And I hadn't either before I got Henry. Okay, but Puggle Moms, and there's all these hashtags. I found like some really awesome, fun people who are Puggle people, and some of them happen to be fitness people, and some of them don't. So I'm like finding them on Instagram, putting like their Instagram address in like a note on my notepad on my phone, and then I'm just trying to like comment and hopefully like seeing if they're like actually at home on their Instagram account, trying to take the conversation over to Facebook. I can do that twice a day. I'm trying to um, strike up conversations with people. I am doing that. I'm not trying. I'm um, to the tune of eight more a day. I haven't necessarily been really super successful every single day at that, but I'm keeping on. I'm finding people. I'm going back to people I've asked before about challenge groups. One of the reasons, you guys, that I'm help, I'm spearheading the starting the two challenge groups a, uh, a month for us, which trust me has been a joy, but it's been a la labor of love. Okay is because we've got things to invite people to. So if you think, well, I don't even know like what to say, invite them to our challenge group, talk to them about their family and do a little forming and then boom, we've got challenge groups coming every two weeks. That is, that is really awesome timing because it gives people a chance to get their challenge pack and get, get going um, and get everything in the mail or they can get top on right away or they can go, oh my gosh, this is so great. I'll go, I'll go to the next one because I don't have time right now. So it is really optimal. So there's something for us to be inviting people to, and we can also be inviting them to join our team, okay, as coaches. Okay, so those are the things. When I say um, the elephant and the rider, the rider is thinking about all the things that could go wrong or all the steps that are needed or all the, you know, checking off things. We have steps. It's not like we're just telling you, um, and hey, I did this, and I'm going to say right now, I've done this in the past, and I made mistakes with some of you guys and with myself constantly trying to motivate you, which truly, I mean, I can try to inspire you, but you really have to be motivated from within. But even if you, I could have motivated you, some of you are like secretly or openly saying, the writer, what are the steps? What do I do? I don't know what to do. And so it's not like you necessarily need to rah, rah, rah all the time. Like you're not like going like from one big cheerleading session to the next, right? You need that sometimes. And that's what personal development helps us do. And hopefully this is what this video will help you to do a little bit. But you also have the steps of what you need, what the content, what the meat of what you're doing. Okay, so let's rein this back in. You do have what it takes, but you are going to have to 
um, we're going to have to work for this. You have to remember that like, even if you've been tracking along with us with this group, and this is true of the people in the group that I'm in and that has like 71 people that is in this Josh Coates group, okay? He says, look, there's two things. Um, remember the compound effect, it takes time. Some of us have been building up our businesses for a little bit longer or doing some of the, some of the right things more consistently than others. And so we're going to be a little further along or some of us are not as far along. He said, don't you dare compare your journey to somebody else. It's like, you know, the first chapter of your story can never be as developed as, or say the first draft or whatever you want to say, as the third or fourth draft of somebody else's story. Okay. And certainly in terms of the story, like if you're in the middle of the story and somebody else was like really toward the end, like that's not fair to compare how you're doing. Okay. So don't do that to yourself. Okay. You are your only competition and to get better and better and better every single day. All right. So, um, another thing. He said, some of us um, gets caught up in constantly thinking like being who we think we should be, being wanting, wanting to be somebody different. He says, because, you know, inevitably as people um, and children who like, you know, as children, we emulate adults, but also as people who are doing the social media thing, and sometimes it's newer for us than others, right? Like some of us have not had a ton of experience of this. So when we start doing um, social media, it's like, we all know that we can portray ourselves a certain way, right? So um, some of us, he says, we're just not like copying the right people. And he's not saying like, we should copy somebody exactly. But the reality is, um, you're going to inevitably kind of be like, Oh, I'm sort of tending to be kind of like this person. or like, I love their style. Other people, you might like, like their style, but it's really not you. And that's when people get salesy and weird and freaky and it doesn't work for them very well. Okay. So don't do that. Um, make sure that you are being yourself, authentic to yourself, not who in your mind you think that you should be. Now, as an example, this Josh gave an example of when he started doing the John Maxwell series or training or whatever that he's, he did for his, his profession. Um, excuse me, I'm going to open the door because my dog has to go. Guys. Um, and reality is a lot of the people um, that were in the group with him were professionals. They already had businesses. They had companies. They were just struggling a little bit to apply or know how to, you know, apply some leadership stuff to their business. Well, Josh didn't. I mean, I, I won't go into all of his story because it's really not, this isn't really about him. But, um, and so he was like trying to be like Mr. Businessman. Well, if you've ever gone over to Josh Coates, like web, like his Facebook profile, he's like this 32 year old dude that like, he's fun and zany and, you know, he's wearing sweatshirts and stuff and he's not, a buttoned up suit guy and so that doesn't come across as authentic it comes across as weird still didn't strange and so that was his example of like that really really worked for those guys who are buttoned up and go downtown and do their jobs at the office or whatever but if that's not you then that's really it's totally embarrassing okay and if that it's not only not you but it won't work for what we're, what we're trying to do okay all right so um transitioning now into like how do we kind of wrap our brains around um this kind of idea of rounding like how can we figure out um what we're gonna we're gonna do okay and he said look he said your vibe is your tribe that kind of phrase your vibe is your tribe meaning um you know kind of like the things that you kind of emit and put out you know put out there is like people are going to be attracted to you Okay, and I don't mean that in like a metaphysical manifestation sense. Some of you are into that, but no, that's okay. But I mean like there's an attraction, like people are like, oh my gosh, that person's like, I'm clicking with them, or like I, they get it, and I get it too. And like, oh, holy cow, you know, their hair's so cute, or I don't know, like they do their nails, and I do mine too. I mean, I, mean, I don't know what the dude thing would be, but they're into sports, and like it's just you're kind of like, they like your style, and you like their style. And if you're fearful that like, what if I'm a freak? Nobody, there are a lot of people like you, trust me. Whether you're nerdy, whether you're sporty, whether you're all these, you know, like dog person like me, and we all have several things, but like kind of how we are, which is, and you know, it is how we look. And it doesn't mean that we have to be, you know, a beautiful movie star or some like Tom Cruise handsome guy or whatever. It just means that that is a part of who, how we present ourselves in this world, how we look, how we talk. Right? Some of us are more casual. Some of us have really, used really big words. Some of us, um, my goodness, if you've ever been around like Carly Del Carlo, who's a top, top coach, I mean, she uses the F-bomb so much. Like, she actually used it in our, I'm going to be really honest, Super Saturday in Seattle, and some of us were cringing because their F-bomb was thrown several times. There were children there. She's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I let her, she's like, 
really sorry. That's what I do. Like I, that's who I am. And I thought you guys knew because some of the people who were helping us <laughs> organize it did know. And we're like, okay, this is really great. It wouldn't have been so bad had there not been children. But anyway, she's a great gal. She's a top coach. She's rocking it. And um, she just swears a lot. And that's kind of her thing. So she's definitely not, she's got tats and she's like this kind of like edgy mom. She's not going to be the buttoned up um, Lindsay Matway or Melanie Metro coach follower person. Okay. Who are these lovely ladies and you know, like Lindsay's cool too, but just totally different vibe, totally different image, totally different thing that they're putting out there. Okay. So try to be yourself, you know, I mean, be the best version of you. Okay. Um, and it's how you carry yourself, how you talk, how you look, what you're, you know, what you're into. Like some of us will go have a cup of beer and not be afraid to like, post about that or we're at the beach or we're in a bikini or whatever like others wouldn't right that's just being yourself and who you are and if it's not okay with other people lots of other will come around us okay that's the deal all right so the biggest thing here is to, to when we think when you sort of think about how we are kind of portraying ourselves and like how we're going to negotiate this whole like branding thing and is this um Mind, your mindset is the key. So you can have all of this interesting content, and we're going to talk about that in a second. But if you don't believe what you're putting out there, if you're, there is always going to be a sense of like, people are like, huh, I really don't, that's so not them, or she doesn't like believe it, you know? And if you, I mean, so that's why, like, if you're speaking from the heart and you're, um, you're enthusiastic, or if you're not like this cheesy person, if you're like, just like you, and you're like, I mean, I have this coach friend, uh, Ryan Chapman, some of you guys probably know him. I know Barry does for sure. And uh, he's, a, he's a great guy. He's a handsome guy. He's got a beautiful family. But he always kind of has this scowl. And the funny thing is, you guys, he was really a really smart guy. Like, he and I can, like, spar back and forth verbally about stuff on Facebook, which is kind of fun. But he was an engineer here in Washington. Anyway, made tons of money before he became a coach. So it was, he definitely didn't have that, like, need to, like, get out of, like, debt or something thing by being a coach. Um, but anyway, he, um, he always kind of has this scowling thing and I'm like, dude, you always look like you're constipated or like you're not having fun. He has an awesome, amazing, huge following and he's a dude and he's not afraid to be like, call my guys in. He works with ladies. He works with triathletes. But my point is he's not like, Hey, the good time guy, because that's not his personality. So I'm not saying be fake, but be authentic be like something about you that is going to attract people. And that's like, there's an authenticity in your face and your eyes about like when you post instead of like, er, big question mark above your head. If you don't believe it, if you're not sure, no one else is going to be okay. Cause it's you that you're really presenting to people. Okay. Which brings us to the next point. Uh, if we could just like offload this and like download it into your brain. I mean, I would love it because so many new people, even like people I talk to that it would, were like, would be coaches think, I don't know if I can sell. I don't know if I can sell Shakeology. I'm not, I'm not a good salesperson. I'm thinking, I sit there and think, you know, it's so interesting because we all are salespeople of ourselves now in this culture, in this mediated culture where we're talking to each other through machines, videos, uploaded videos, instant live streaming stuff. I mean, pictures. I mean, it, it's, we are selling ourselves. You're not primarily selling Shakeology, the products. Um, you're selling yourself. And if you don't believe me, then just, you know, understand that, you know, Beachbody would have had a lot, lot less complicated time. Carl and those guys just sitting on the beach of, beaches of Santa Monica or Malibu or wherever the heck they live. And just like counting their stacks of money with the infomercials and products at Walmart and Target. You've heard me say that before. All they needed to do is place their, their products in a 1-800 in a number and a website. And they could just sit there and count their, okay. The point being, they don't need you and they don't need me to sell P90X. That's so ridiculous. It actually makes me laugh. Okay. What they did need was people who are compelling success stories, a.k.a. the brand. They're owning the brand. They're, they're walking around with the brand on, which is literally when we're doing shareware, but also like our bodies, our health, our transformation. Okay. Our look, you know, our health. Um, being examples of being like little billboards for the company, for the products, okay? And the thing with that is this. You can be the most amazing, and I've seen this happen. It's kind of confounding. You can be the most amazing success story. It can be somebody who's lost hundreds and hundreds of pounds, and if you're not, if you're not authentically sharing and inviting people out there, 
you won't, it won't, nothing will happen for you. It's the craziest thing. They might be like, yay, you're so fantastic. Look how awesome you are with you, whatever you did, you know, but they never make the connection between like, oh my gosh, I want to be a part of that. Like, how do I, how do I do that? Okay. But, um, and then flip the coin over and if you've, there's, I'm just trying to think of some people who are just in the middle of their journey. I mean, I'll tell you what, I met somebody in one of my first success club trips and she just has that, like, honestly, not very fit yet. I mean, I, I've never in my whole life been that heavy. Many, many people haven't. But she had lost some weight. She had grand success. She totally owned that stuff, you guys. She just knew. She's like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to go do this. And I just, you know, I just success called my first year. And I'm just now going to go become an elite coach. And I'm thinking, what? You know, she did. And you see her name. And I won't name her name or name because I'm going to be like mean or something about her weight and it's really not about that it's about it was about progress it was about transformation it was about people believing her she's an opinion maker she's she's attractive she she draws people people to herself okay she found her tribe and her tribe trusts her and they're going to do kind of what she says okay and and she's really she can, she's continuing to move down the path it's not like she's just sitting around and not doing you know the workouts and stuff like that does that make sense though the difference between selling yourself and selling the products the products sell themselves. The products look good on us. But if we're not the kind of compelling people, they're going to go out there and, and mix it up with people and find people and be attracted to people. It doesn't, you're not going to be a successful coach, okay? Because Beachbody's already selling stuff. 27 hours, literally 27 hours a day. And what I mean by that is on different mar uh, channels of the TV, more than three hours, more than an entire day's worth of infomercials going. ESPN, at least in them all, okay? Not even just at night now. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, you are selling you now. So if that is true, and that is the case, and trust me, it is, mindset, again, we're going to say it again, mindset is the key. Well, what does that mean? Okay, write these things down. People will buy into me or you, and I say buy into, okay, they're going to go, well, yes, 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 I want to sign, where do I get that? Where do I, how do I do this, you know, um, based on, what I, I believe about myself, okay? So, and that's, it kind of creates like, you know, my be, the be, do, have, okay? So, who I be, which is M, but, you know, we're going to say we do have. And then, because of that belief, I'm going out there and doing things. And then because of that, the doing the right things, I'm going to have things, okay? So, let's back this up for a second. A lot of us in Western culture in this wonderful year 2016 and basically the whole 20, 20th and 21st century so far have sort of this idea that this it's like I call it the lottery mentality if I had this like money or if I had this success that somehow just I opened the door to get the paper and there it was on the doorstep oh hey success it's like a challenge pack that came and it's right there on my doorstep if I had the success had this money had this position of power had this somehow this something built up okay, the je ne sais quoi, this stuff, then um, I would be able to do these things with that many, and I would then be this amazing person. I would be this powerful person. I would be this person of influence. I would be this person that people look to. Isn't that amazing? Maybe it's because we're so materialistic. We have it all wrong. Like, it's more about the being the person, becoming that person, being that person, based on our mindset and our belief, okay? That's going to then lead us to do the right actions. And that's why this group that I'm in and this course group that we're going to be starting, that hopefully you're going to see in this video over and over again that I'm doing right now for week three, it's based on that because it's about you believe this and you're becoming this person and your belief is growing and growing about this. Then you're doing all the right, right activities. Why that group's activity-based, specific steps. And then you're going to have what you want, Okay. Because you're doing the right things, which in this case is helping other people, reaching out to other people, helping, helping people get a transformation story, okay? Their lives are being changed. There's results. It's real. It's tangible. It's not this BS. It's not just bunk that we're turning out and just pipe. It's tangible, real stuff based on the real activities that we do, okay? And in this case, the inviting, recruiting activities that we do to help people get hooked up with what we're offering, then we're going to have. You're not going to make, I mean, I trust me, I have been doing this for a while and I've done some of the right things and many of the wrong things and some of it consistently and some of it not, okay? There is no way in the world that you're going to wake up and just all of a sudden be making $5,000 a week because, well, first of all, if you don't believe that you can do it, you don't believe that you're a top coach, that you're 
really successful coach and that you can do this, that people want to be around you and are attracted to you, then you're not going to actually do the activities that are going to earn the money. A lot of times, this is what we do as coaches. We think, oh my gosh, you see people and at these coach events, you see the top coach, you see people, um, the elite coaches and the fantastic you know, accommodations they have on the cruise, which is, you know, even better than the rest of our, which are, are incredible themselves, you know, right? But you see the end product, you don't see them slogging away every day, doing the right things, not getting wrapped up in like their head and crazy thoughts about people not wanting to talk to them and they just do stuff, okay? But they had to decide early on that they could, I remember listening to um, Lindsay Matway, who's got a crazy wild story, you probably know it, and if you don't, it'd be interesting for you to go YouTube it. And she had like, her child was sick, I think she was, I mean, to be honest, she says a waitress, but it kind of was kind of like an alert dancer. I mean, whatever. I don't really care. But I mean, not a great, awesome, fantastic going place job. Like she was going, man, I'm just making the bills here because my child's been so sick with surgeries and stuff like that. Okay. So, but she got, she saw that co coaching opportunity and she grabbed on it and she said, right at once she knew I'm going to be the top coach. I have what it takes. I don't know how she knew that. Okay. But she just said, I believe it. Then I'm going to go do stuff. I'm going to figure out what it takes to do that. And she was our first woman top coach. Did you know that? We had men, men, men for years and years. And all of a sudden she believed that she could be a top coach. And actually now a lot of women have been top coach too, which, hey, I'm all for the dudes. But there are way more women in this company. And for a long time, women, I just didn't think they could believe that they could do it. Isn't that weird? But anyway. Okay. So that is the whole thing. B, which is based on belief. Then you do. And then you have. Okay. And that's sort of like. It's kind of a law of the universe, you guys. It's been around for a long time, people talking about that. Instead of like, i got to have something by some fluke. Somebody gives me something. In fact, did you know that's why, like, um, I think it's something crazy, like 75 to 95% or something of people who uh, win the lottery in this country go bankrupt. We're talking millions and tens of millions of dollars. Why? Because they didn't believe they weren't the kind of person that really should have that money or that was capable of keeping that money or investing it well. And then they didn't do things that would do that would do well with that money. Like they did invest it. They spent it all. I mean, on crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. They give it all away to their family. And that's fine. But like bankrupt means you've overspent what you have. They didn't just spend it down to zero and go back to their $55,000 a year job. They went bankrupt. Okay. So think about that. Because they didn't have that right order. They had when they weren't the person that was doing the right activities in order to be able to manage that. Okay. All right. So here is what Josh would like us to do. This is really, really interesting to think about. In terms of social media this week, okay, in terms of how you're presenting yourself on Facebook, in terms of um, how you think about things as you sit down to work and you sit down to invite people or not, okay, in terms of what you're posting on Instagram, think about this. If I was a top, were a top 10 coach right now, if I had that status, okay, um, and you could be top 10, you know, could be... 15-star, you know, elite coach or whatever you want to name, even a five-star coach maybe, even like diamond coach. I mean, whatever in your mind is like the bigger step for you, think about to yourself, what, how would I carry myself? How would I, what would I say? What would I post? What would I be willing to put out there? How would I be different? How would I act differently than I do now? Okay. Um, because here's the key. The key is that in terms of the recruiting and what we're trying to do here and in terms of the recruiting in order to get more people on our team in order to get a momentum and, and build a movement going, getting, getting movement going, it's really based on what you're doing. But the idea, of course, we keep saying is that you can't consistently do those things with authenticity and, and with believability unless you believe them that yourself that you can and you're worthy, right? So um, the key really is that we're not doing it, it's, you know, if you look out there, it's basically um, the top coaches have been doing the right things for a longer amount of time. Some of us haven't been doing the right things, and we may have been doing it a long time. Some of us haven't been doing the thing, right things, and we haven't been doing them. That's good, because we haven't been in a bad pattern. But what I can truthfully say is that none of us who is, feels stuck or hasn't, you know, sort of moved along like we would like to have been doing the right things for a long amount of time. Okay, does that make sense? So there is the right activities and a consistency that we're trying to build here. And the fact of the matter is, those coasters is just doing the right things for a long time. And consistently, and I mean a long time, I mean 
gosh, there's some coaches who, and you think, oh my gosh, they went five star in eight months. They work 12 hours a day. They put their kids in childcare. I mean, like they were, it was really, really concentrated and they had a sense right away what they needed to do. And they've maybe like sat for two months and like just went nuts. Okay. So I'm not saying it takes five years or 55 days or whatever, but that sense of the principle is this, the right amount, the right things over a consistent pattern of time. Okay. All right. So, um, the, the thing that we're trying to really hammer over and over and over in this call is that you have to think clearly and properly in order to actually be able to do um, the right things. And you cannot switch the be, do, have around and expect it to work. Okay. All right. So um, the thing with social media and the thing with the, the way that we, you know, are kind of throwing ourselves out there in social media land Let's just be honest. Everybody tries to present themselves in a way that's like, hey, look at my awesome life. Woo, I'm over here in Coronado or oh, on a cruise. Or, I mean, we're not going to post like, oh my gosh, I just woke up and threw up. But, I mean, maybe some people do that. Like, really? You know, you look horrible and like in your down mo moments and you're, you know, maybe you post about that, but we don't have like endless selfies of us looking horrible, I, I don't think. Or I'm having a hard day. Look at how depressed I am. Look at my fat. I don't know. Maybe we do, but generally on social media, I would say most people are like pictures of their vacation, pictures of high moments, pictures of birthday parties, right? So let's just understand right now that everyone's trying to present them but their best self. So in light of that, um, we have to act like a movie star or a rock star, which is to say post stuff, even if you think, oh my goodness, people don't care what I'm doing. Then we talked about this the first video, right? Like, um, <laughs> you know, you have to realize that daily we're putting things out there and they're, you know, not everybody's going to connect with it. Not everybody's going to care. Um, but we're going to put things out there anyway that our tribe will find us. Our people will connect to it. Okay. Um, so the key that though, that every time we got to believe we have what it takes. And if we don't believe we got to work on our personal development and talk to each other and encourage each other and just keep moving forward and trying to grow in that because the believability of what we're doing, like some of us do post um, selfies. I'm going to be really honest. And sometimes it's like, you're so shy. It's like, there's a big question mark above your head. It doesn't matter how pretty or handsome or not you are. It just is sort of like people are like, what? You know, because they have to believe that like, yeah, this is a part of like the Kelly brand now. Like I totally get that. And I, I struggled at first to be like, I was trying to like figure out my identity as a teacher. And I have this, I've been a theologian. I mean, hello. And I can still like work some of that stuff in, of course. But I was so nervous and so worried that I was going to be seen as some sort of weird marketer that I was like, not even like if you ask Donna, she's like, oh my gosh, you didn't even really tell me. She was trying to ask me what I was doing when I lived in Hawaii and I was there for like five months after I had been there longer, but five months of that time I had been a coach and was, you know, she was like seeing my changes and she was even over in Hawaii. We ended up not getting together, but she, she was like, holy cow, you were so like undercover about it like she didn't even know what it was until I got back home and was like okay you know came with like the like, you know, farm. she's like wow you know I want some of that you know and we got her going and coaching and psychology okay so you know I was so reticent to say anything um because I didn't really I was having a kind of an identity crisis I really didn't know how it all kind of mixed I want you to help you catapult beyond that okay there are somebody you know who does this really really awesome and I don't know if she's gonna watch this video at all is Jackie Parker she is a vet. She's like this kick-ass lady. She's totally boss. If you, she doesn't care, right? She's got her people. She just owns everything that she does. I mean, she makes golfing look like I was, you know, done on the red carpet in Hollywood or something. I mean, everything she does is like full on is awesome. But do you think she's like, oh, here I am. I'm a coach and I don't really want people. I want them to think of me as this smart vet and not She's like, whatever, it's like all a part of me. Okay, that's that's how you want to be. Whatever other stuff you do, this is a part of you too. Okay. Um, here is an example. Josh gave this long explanation about literally how he was, he was in a band and they're trying to be rock stars because he's going to tell us later, okay, I'm going to fast forward that you need to be like a rock star or a movie star too. And I just mentioned that before, but okay, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what that means. But he's, here's what he said. You can't do the same things in front of the same people over and over and over and hope to gain success. That is why, yes, we're posting things on, on our Facebook wall, but, you know, and maybe if we were start to do maybe some Facebook ads, if we've got like a page, 
but we're trying to go out to Instagram and other social media forms, platforms, to find new people. Because the same people, I mean, some of them are going to come back and be like, hey, I want to join your challenge group. That's going to be like every now and then you'll have two success club points. You're like, okay, that's cool, you know. And we love them, right? Those are our people. But you're not going to be like hammering. You don't get hammer people enough in your circle for them to be like all of a sudden wake up and want to be a coach on your team and make help you make five thousand dollars a week and get fit and go be a part of the beach body challenge that's not going to happen probably okay they've heard it they've heard the opportunity and we've got to move on to other people while we also keep our arms open wide to those our friends and family okay does that make sense you cannot continue to try to just hammer on the same people it's kind of like trying to be a rock star in a small town and be like okay keep playing these venues or whatever like i gotta go out to other cities and, to, and like tour okay so that's the thing all right this is very interesting Josh said this and this, I think it's fascinating he said you know what he's been doing this for so long now I, mean, I guess it has been like it's been a couple of years but he's been doing it consistently like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Beachbody coaches and he told us look he his business exclusively is built on helping Beachbody coaches okay he says he's been doing this all he'll look at somebody's selfie and tell them if they're gonna if they believe in what they're doing and of course the belief um, then leads to whether he knows that they're doing the right things or not and over the round of long, long amount of time and if they're going to be successful and have what they want. Isn't that amazing? So think about that. Think about like what, how am I presenting myself? Okay. Because people are attracted to confidence. It's not about being the prettiest girl in the room or having the biggest biceps if you're a guy or whatever. Okay. It's about being confident and people get, then they're going to trust us to go like, I want to go along wherever you're going along versus you're so unsure. I don't know. In that has happened to me in the past where it's like, you go, what? They're going off. They're going to go do 21 day fix. And it's like, they went with somebody else and they're like, yeah, sorry. And you're thinking I used to get mad at them. Now I get mad at myself. I'm like, okay, you need to change something. Okay. They didn't see me as the person that they could trust. That doesn't happen so much anymore, but it used to. And I would get really pissed off at people. And I'm like, you know what? Be mad at yourself because they didn't trust you because you, uh, you know, you weren't giving off that sense of confidence for them to be able to trust you. All right. Some of us, um, we really, really, really struggle with feeling like we won't, we don't have, we're, we're posers and we won't be able to help people and we don't have the success level. Here's what Josh says about this. That is total bunk because of this. Even if you had no idea what you're doing, even if you were the brand, most green coach who had no clue what you were doing, there are so many, the Beachbody has set it up with so much training and with teams and with uplines and with um, YouTube videos, even if they didn't even know where the coach office was, there's so many YouTube trainings, thousands and thousands of thousands of them that people have done, as well as Beachbody's channel, hello, on YouTube, of what to do. Okay, so if you take the pressure off yourself for that for a second, that is like the nuts and bolts of it. What really is lacking is that you don't believe, like if you really believe this is the most amazing opportunity in the world and that like, I want the whole world to know, we, you would be recruiting a lot more, so would I. Okay, and so that's what I'm working on. Okay, that confidence, that believing, and you'd be attracting people. And then that point is just about of getting people to training. And that's one of the reasons that we're doing this too, is we're trying to say, take the pressure off of you guys for that part. Go find people. Go do the activities every day that are going to help you build your business personally. Okay? And then we could shuttle you into you know, people into challenge groups as well as um, training, okay, for you as new coaches. Okay. So, um, don't give off that, like, oh my gosh, I hope, it's kind of like, I hope the ball doesn't come to me in a, in a game. Have you ever seen that? Or maybe you were that kid. I hope you have, and it's like, there's a posture you take where you're like, oh dear Lord, please don't let the ball come to me because I don't know what to do with it. Okay. The, then there's other kids who are like, I want, they want the ball all the time. Okay. Whether or not, sometimes they're not even very good. They just love it so much. They want the ball. Be the kid that wants the ball. Okay. Okay. Now he would like us to pick a music star, pop star, rock star, or a movie star. And he would like us to pretend that we're that person. Okay. So it could be somebody that you think you like their style. You kind of like resonate with that style. Like I'm not, look at me. I am not a tat. Like I'm not even going to be like a, I'm not a Bonnie Raitt who was like an old country, like hardcore gravelly voice, whatever. I'm not even Cheryl Crow. I'm using older people if, like from when I was younger. Um, I am certainly not like, I don't know if Taylor Swift, I'm, I'm not really into pop music, but I would say like, I'm more of like in terms of movie stars, which I kind of resonates with me more than music. Um, Meg Ryan, Meg Ryan is the cute girl next door who has confidence, but she's not too whatever. And she just kind of like owns it. She's really quite a good actress, but she's understated. Okay. 
um, and has that sort of people are attracted to her <coughs> because of there's whatever bubbly thing and I think I have people all your eyes and all that stuff you know okay so I always think I'm gonna think of myself as Meg Ryan walking into room like gonna own it you know I'm kind of get, trying to get the Meg Ryan hair growing out a little bit too right okay so this this whole week I'm gonna think of myself as Meg Ryan when I'm posting when I'm asking people which I've really kind of gotten over my fear of like all that stuff but it's still gonna be fun okay so it's gonna be Meg Ryan when I'm posting on social um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna present myself like that okay I'm so sorry for to have some water. So here's the thing about like he, he said this is a really 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 huge thing for people. Mm. Okay guys, um, that we're so often worried what people are thinking about us, but really everyone's worried what people's thinking about them. Like so, they're not really thinking of that because they're thinking about if I'm thinking about them. <laughs> That's like all kind of a circular thing. Does that make sense? Like. We always think everyone else has got it together. We don't. No, they don't. They don't. Okay. And they're not thinking, oh my gosh, this person's talking to me about this. Probably. They might be, but again, we've talked about that in the past. Like they're probably not going to be like rejecting you from that. They might be saying no to the opportunity or ignore you. Okay. Um, and here's the thing. Like if you think about movies, if you think ac about actors, if you think about like, oh my goodness, if you like, I used to work in a middle school, right? And I would say like, who's cool? And I, and the kids were like, so-and-so. And everyone, half of the class would be like, oh, no. Or more, and like, really? You know, Selena Gomez, or I don't know, Il Devo, or whatever. I mean, there's just like, and they would go off about One Direction, and they'd laugh, or Taylor Swift, you know. Um, oh my gosh, Justin Bieber. I mean, that's, the like, people really love to hate him, and I'm thinking, somebody likes him. He's still, he's still selling a whole hip load of albums still, right? Like, he doesn't suck so bad that nobody likes him, okay? And here's the, here's the point of that. Even the most accomplished people in their fields that are like famous, rock stars, movie stars, many people don't like their work, don't like their songs, but enough people do that they're wildly successful. You cannot be loved by everybody. You cannot be waiting to have everybody you know, receive you well. You can't, re you know, everybody, like if you're going to wait till you, you really arrive and you think that no one's going to reject you or reject the offer of like the challenge pack for coaching, holy cow. You better go hide yourself in the closet because it, it happened in honey. It is not going to happen in life. It's not going to happen here. Okay. I mean, at best, half the people are going to love us and half are going to be like, mm, or even hate us. That's life, right? We're not looking for people who are not looking for us. Okay. That's the whole point of us getting our, our tribe. Okay. To us and going out to our tribe. Does that make sense? We're not trying to appeal to everybody because it's just impossible and it's, it's just crazy making and it's not going to work. Okay. So go with the people that love you. Go with the people that connect with you. Find those people. Find those people by thinking about who you are as a person, like, and starting to give content out there. But even more than the, the what of the content, really, is how you're presenting yourself. Okay, my Thursday hangout, guys, I'm going to, so if you're seeing this later on, disregard. But the Thursday hangout, I'm going to talk about some ways of presenting ourselves with our photos better. Um, that I found like pick stitch, which again, like I mentioned before, I love, love, love it. It makes you look, I mean, if you look at my photos right now, they kind of look like a professional person did them. And it's just because of that photo I have. Okay. So never do an, um, a boring photo ever again, even if it's a picture of your dog, literally, or if you hold in the Shakeology, which is, you're going to see that. Okay. Because pick stitch makes you look like a photographer. All right. So guys, please, please, please start to believe in yourself. Um, if you don't believe, I mean, I, I hope that you believe in their products enough right now, because if you don't, like, I'm not really sure what we're doing here, but then, you know, I'm pretty sure you do it. Like, you take Shakeology and um, you do our workouts and stuff like that. But m mostly it's believing in you. So figure out which rock star or movie star you're going to be, okay? And I'm going to ask you, because I think this is going to be fun. Uh, you can call me Meg Ryan all week if you want. All right, you guys, I will talk to you later on. Okay, bye.